Hello, I'm Rabbi Ariel Rakovsky, and it is a privilege to deliver this shir in the merit of a refuah shalema for Sarah Lamdrach, Sarah Rivka Vasmindel. While I don't have the privilege of knowing her personally in my four and a half years as assistant rabbi at the Jewish Center, I benefited greatly from the presence and the guidance and the generosity and graciousness of Rabbi and Mrs. Lamb, and therefore it is really a privilege for me to be able to be a part of this project. The Perak of Tehillim that we're studying today is Perak Lam and Gimel. It begins with a well-known phrase, Rananud tzadikim Bahashem layesharim na'ava tehillah. There really are seven different themes that are addressed in this chapter of Tehillim. The first, of course, is the um, is the attributes of tzedek and mishpat, the attributes of uh, justice and righteousness that are uh, ascribed to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is the creator of the world and that he does so with uh, one mamar, with uh, with great ease, one uh, saying, as it were. The fact that as opposed to mankind's frailty and fickleness, God's advice and God's word uh, is eternal. That God chose the Jewish people as his inheritance. That God is uh, omniscient and omnipotent. That mankind is, prail, is puny and frail against God. And that mankind, as we said, is fickle that God saves those who fear Him and worship Him uh, with honesty. And finally, the last pasuk, the last two pasukim, nafshenu chiksala Hashem ezreinu umagineinu hu, that our soul yearns for and waits for the salvation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I wanted to share with you the, um, the commentary, the explanation offered for this uh, mizmor, by uh, Rav Moshe Alshif, the great uh, Kabbalist living in Tzvat uh, in the uh, 16th century, who wrote a monumental commentary, a beautiful commentary, on all of Tehillim. And he points out that there is a diff that within the first phrase itself, we find a number of different terms that appear to be inconsistent and mutually exclusive, or at the very least different. Rananud tzadikim b'Hashem, la yisharim na'ava tehila. Let those who are uh, righteous um, rejoice in Hashem. La yisharim. Let's translate that as those who are upright and honest. Na'ava tehila. It is beautiful to offer praise. Rina, from the Rananu is from the term Rina. Rinana. That is uh, not the same as Tehillah. So those are two different terms. And a Tzadik and a Yashar are also two different, uh, two different terms, describing two different kinds of individuals. al Sheikh explains that these are, in fact, referring to two different types of behaviors. Being a Tzadik is someone who is scrupulous to adhere to the letter of the law. And that's it. There is no such. There is nothing that is beyond that. Strictly the letter of the law. That person is a tzaddik. However, going beyond the letter of the law, what is called bifnim mishura sadin, doing more than is required, more than is necessary, that kind of a person is a yashar. In fact, the Gemara in Bava Metzia tells us on the pasuk, beasisa hayashar vehatov beinei Hashem. The Gemara tells us that that is the biblical requirement of going beyond the strict letter of the biblical law, doing that which is lifnim mishrasinet, hayashar v'atov, that which is upright and that which is honest in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Um, so the al uses these terms, and he says that this entire pasuk, this entire parak, sorry, refers to the doubts expressed by people who are cast in the darkest of exile, it is referring to the, the, the doubts of those people as to the divine providence, as to the role of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world. As he writes, 
המזמור הזה יסוב על בני הגלוס, הרואים את גלוס ישראל הצר והארוך, the long and difficult גלוס, אשר לא ייווצר ביצר סמוך מלהרהר ולא מר מזלס, and the יצר הרע, the evil inclination, will get us thinking what is all of this good for anyway. Not only that, there are people who were, uh, there are people who are righteous that are suffering, and these are the kind of thoughts that people have, and we're not talking about generations, as he writes, in which there is a lack of righteous individuals. We had generations in which there were Tanaim. We had generations of which there were Amoraim. And, it, and it's easy to think that there is no longer any kind of divine providence in the world. And so it is to those people that this entire Mizmor is speaking. Um, as he writes, Al Cain, Lehasir Toe Melev Habaim Leharher, Ba David Beruach Kodsho, Lehazek Ulamates, Lev Shlome Emune Israel. In order to counteract this erroneous perspective of those who wish to uh, think about and who wish to question the Gullus and wish to question the role of the divine providence in the world, it is for those individuals that this Mizmor is speaking, that David wanted to strengthen the belief of those who were already strong in their belief and make sure that, uh, they, were, uh, that they were consoled and they were comforted and they were strengthened. And that's why he begins, Rananut Sadiqim Ba'ashem those who are doing the right thing, so they will rejoice in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. La Yesharim Na'avat those who are going beyond the letter of the law, they also will have, um, they will be able to offer uh, this kind of praise. They will not even need to offer Rinana, to offer rejoicing, to be proactive. They, for them, the Tehillah, they will, it will come to them naturally without any kind of preparation. Renana, that refers to the kind of praise that comes as a result of human agency. Tehillah is what comes naturally. And he goes on, and he says, Shir la Hashem, Shir Chadash, sing for God a new song, Ki yashar dvar Hashem v'chol ma'aseu v'emuna. If you are in doubt, you will see the actions of God are righteous. Everything that he does is with ultimate faith and kindness. O Hevtzdako Mishpat, that God loves justice and righteousness. And, if you are wondering whether God leaves the world to operate in some kind of whim, that there is no longer any kind of divine providence, then David HaMelech goes on. Bidvar Hashem Shamayim Nasu, God is the creator of the world. And then he goes on and says, Mishamayim hebit Hashem ra'ayas kol b'nei ha'adam, that God sees all of the actions of all mankind. Ha'mimachon shivto hishkiach el kol yoshevei ha'aretz, and that God watches all those who dwell in the land. And on and on. And, and he says, Sheker hasus litshua, that ultimately we can put in, the Alshach explains, we can put in hishtadlos, we can put in our actions, and that is important. But ultimately, we have to recognize that um, as much as our actions are important, Hishtadlus is not going to be what, is the, what seals the deal. Hishtadlus is uh, secondary. It is the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Ritzon Hashem, that is what causes everything to happen. And then, then he continues, and he says that the last two psukim, Nafshenu chikesala Hashem, Ezreinu umagineinu hu, that our soul yearns for Hashem, He is our helper and our protector. Ki vo yismach libeinu, ki v'shein kodsho batachnu, because in Him our heart will be gladdened. Ki v'shein kodsho, in His holy name we have trusted. Ki hi chastecha Hashem aleinu, and may your kindness, May your charity extend to us, ka'asher yichanu lach, as we have yearned for you. That is the response of the people in the Gullahs to this reassurance. That even as it may seem that times are dark, 
it may seem that there is a sense of Hester Panin, a sense that God has hidden himself, that it is not true, that God still exercises the attribute of justice and mercy when dealing with the world, that God still watches over us from his dwelling place, as it were. And so all that is left for us to say, those of us who are in the Galus, is Nafshenu Chikesala Hashem, that our soul yearns for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and to pray that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's kindness extends to us, commensurate with the way that we yearn for Him.